Sri Nam Kirtan. Gopi Parandandam Madham Manoha Gopi Parandandam Madham Manoha Kali Adamana Vidhanaha Kali Adamana Vidhanaha Hamala Harinam Hamia Vilasa Hamala Harinam Hamia Vilasa Healthy pain of poor and hard and having a nagar of bada from Sivadana to Mahasai. Hey, Pajajan of Fallen, Suda Kulan Hasan. Bhajadhan of Fan, Sudakulan Hasan Ham. And Hantag Hudan Rako Ham. And Hantag Hudan Rako Ham. Hey, go in the mud of never need to task. Go in the mud of never need to task. Soon, Harun on the go Sundaranda Gopa Jamuna Tata Chara Gopi Vasanohara Jamuna Tata Chara Gopi Vasanohara Rasara Sikha Kripa Mohaya Hey Rasara Sikha Kripa Mohaya Hey Sri Rada Vala Vrindavan and Hatta Padayam Hey as we are out of all of the wind about and not the bottom. As we are out of all of the wind about and not the bottom. Bhakti Vino has run. She love a good Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hey, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hey, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ghum Hare Rama, Rama, Govindam Harava, Ravanita Thasara. Jamuna Tata Chara, who gave us a no other. She Hare 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 Good night. Beautiful name for Krishna. His mother calls him Kanai. So, yes. So, Nama Om Vishnu Badaya, Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gorvani Pacharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavari Pastyatyare Satarine, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadad, Har Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hmm. So today is the anniversary celebration of the disappearance of Sri Abhiram Gopal, also known as Ramdas. <laughs> Ramdas Abhiram. He was the favorite of Lord Nityananda. Uh, he was a Gopal. And in his previous birth, he was Sridam, who was a cowherd boy in Vrindavan with Lord Sri Krishna. <laughs> uh, there are many, many wonderful little pastimes we can try to offer. But one that is quite interesting is that when Krishna and Balaram were in Vrindavan and all the cowherd boys, uh, they started playing a game called hide and seek. And Sridam, one of the main cowherd boys, he hid in inside of a cave. And uh, then, after some time, Lord Krishna decided to leave and take all his friends and then go to Navadweep and advent there as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Natyananda. Of course, the game was over, but nobody had found the Sridam, so he remained hidden in the cave for thousands of years. <laughs> After some time, when Lord Chaitanya was in Navadweep, he said, where is, where is Sridam? Where is Sridam? Where is Sridam? Where is he gone? And then the Lord fainted, thinking, where is my good friend, Sridam? And then he went into ecstasy and separation from Sridam. Lord Nityananda replied, Well, I, I think we left him in, in Vrindavan. <laughs> well, the Lord said, Well, go find him, bring him here immediately. So when he went to the vicinity of Govardhan and he started calling, Hey, Sridam, Sridam, Sridam. And Sridam came out of his cave and said, Who's calling? 
that this is Belay. Belay? No. Really? He came out. He looked. You're not Belay. Yes, I am. You don't look like him. You look kind of small. <laughs> well, I am. I'm just in a different form right now. And actually, Lord Chaitanya is waiting for you. He's uh, Lord Krishna is waiting for you, and he's advented himself in another incarnation in a place called Navadweep in West Bengal. He wants you to come. Well, I don't know if you're actually well, I, you know, because he was the only one that could beat me in racing. So let's have a race. Okay. And uh, I'll clap my hands. He clapped his hands and he started to run. And so Nityananda, who is now there, he's Balaram, but he's now in his form as Nityananda. He follows and he's running after uh, uh, you know, Sridham. So they're running around the hill and they went around four times. <laughs> Finally, you know how, how long Govardhan Hill is now, and it's even shorter than it was in those days. Now it's 22 kilometers around. So now in those days, it was much, much bigger. And so they went around four times and then Sridham started to slow down because his dhoti was getting loose. He wanted to fix his dhoti. And when he looked, he saw Nityananda was right behind him. He said, oh, okay, you must be Nityananda because no one else, and you must be Balaram because no one else can keep up with him. I'm sorry I doubted you, but your appearance in Kali Yuga has confused me. Anyway, why have you come looking for me? Well, where has Kanai gone to? I'm telling you, just lift him carefully, said Nityananda. We've all now the Navadweep. And we will come. We want we want you to join us in our pastimes. He said, No, I'm not going. I can understand that I have to sit in someone's room for ten months. Not me. <laughs> Besides that, all of you left me behind. So what is the use of you coming now? Of my coming now? Nityananda replied, Anyway, let's go and discuss the matter with Krishna. From the time being, you can come in your same dress. Sri Dhan laughed. Okay, but you have to carry me on your shoulders. After all that running, my feet has become very heavy. <laughs> so Lord Nityananda said, all right. So he puts him on his shoulders. If I say no, you will advertise to everyone that I have become tired from running after you. You are the chief cowherd boy. Please try to consider the fact that I accept the happiness and distress from wherever else, whichever one else feels. Here in this, Sri Dham submitted somewhat. Well, you and I are the same. You know that when Krishna's side loses, I sometimes carry you on my shoulders. Nityananda says, Kanai is very much subjugated by your love. None of his pastimes are beyond your perception. All of the other cowherd boys always sing your praises. Come on, let's go meet Karanga. Sridharm was somewhat convinced and they went in dress and they all he took on his ornaments and they all approached Vidyanagar. When Sri when they arrived, Sri Sachinandana embraced Sridharm. And he said to Lord Chaitanya, who was who's Kanai actually, why you guys got shaven heads? <laughs> Mahaprabhu explained how in Kali Yuga renunciation that is that the people can cross over the ocean of material existence. And although I am the same Krishna from Vrindavan, and this is the same Balaram, we, I, I have come as a devotee, and therefore we are acting in this mood of renunciation. My name now is Sri Krishna Chaitanya. He said, but you're so small. Because when Krishna was on the planet, he was 14 feet tall, which means about, how many, about three and a half meters tall? No, four and a half meters tall, yeah. Krishna, Krishna was one of the smaller ones. He mentions that in the Battle of Kurukshetra, some of the warriors were 20 feet tall. You can imagine. 
big giant monsters for warriors fighting. <laughs> but that was that was in uh, you know the end of the Dwarpa Yuga when people were much more qualified. Now we're all little guys. We have shrunk down kind of small here. <laughs> anyway, Abhiram understood. And and he said, okay, Lord Chaitanya said, now we can play here. And then he decided to make himself smaller. So he became the same size as Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> and that way they could play. So Abhiram Thakur was a very interesting personality, very dear to Lord Nityananda. When Lord Nityananda traveled from Navadvip Dham, I'm sorry, from Jagannath Puri to Navadvip, on the order of Lord Chaitanya, he took all his Gopal assistants. And of course, uh, the main one was Sri Abhiram Thakur. Now, Abhiram was very powerful. Sometimes he would just pick fights with tigers and wrestle with tigers. And sometimes in his mood as a cowherd boy, he would go into the forest and take a whole tree and hold it up like a flute and keep it like that. And he stood there one time for nine hours without moving. So this was Abhiram. <laughs> Abhiram had the power that if anybody was not a pure devotee and he had paid his obeisances to that person, the person would immediately die. <laughs> of course, he wouldn't pay obeisances to anyone, only those who he thought were pure devotees. But if someone was presenting themselves as a pure devotee and wasn't, and they had to be very careful because if they got their obeisances from Abhiram, that was the last thing they did. So one time, Mukunda, Mukunda, one of Lord Chaitanya's associate who was a doctor, he's, he had one boy, son named Raghunandana. Now, Raghunandana was just a little boy. He was about five years old. And Mukunda was worshipping his deity, Gopinath, every day. So this time, he said to his wife, you know, I think it's about time that our son, Raghu Nandana, starts to do deity worship to, to, Gop to Gopinath. Yeah. And so, his wife agreed. He said, he calls his son, my dear son, your mother is here. I have to leave for work early today, and she will teach you the ways in which you can offer boga to Gopinath. So follow what she says, and I will see you in the evening. So he left. His mother brought in a tray with a glass of milk and a ladu, big ladu. <laughs> and she said to her son, Raghunandana, you take this tray with the milk and ladu, you go into the deity room. You see Gopinath there. You place it in front of him. Then you go sit in the corner. And you chant this mantra. And while you're chanting this mantra, you ring the bell. And then after you finish chanting the mantra, you say, Gopinath, come take your food. Well, the boy was pretty intelligent. So he understood everything his mother said. So now he goes into the deity room, places the tray of ladu and milk in front of the deity, and sits down, chants the mantra, finishes and says, Gopinath, please take your food. Now the boy was expecting that the Gopinath deity would eat everything. Of course, we understand the deity does eat. Angani yasya sakalendri piti manti pasyanti panti. All his limbs are interchangeable, so Krishna can eat with any part of his body. That's why when we offer food to the deity, he's actually eating it, but out of his mercy, he leaves the remnants for the devotees. And I'll tell another story related to that. 
So now, uh, Gopi, uh, Raghunandana is seeing that Gopinath is not eating. He thinks he's not eating. So he starts crying and he says, Gopinath, Gopinath, I have my father and mother have given me this to offer to you and you're not eating. They will be disappointed and they may be angry with me. So he's crying. Finally, the deity said, well, you know, I'm a deity. <laughs> I don't eat like you do, <laughs> but I'm accepting it. He said, no, no, you have to eat. You have to eat. So the deity drank the milk and ate the ladu. And there was nothing on the tray. The boy comes out with the empty tray. His mother asks, where is the prashad? Well, you told me. He didn't want to eat at first. But when I cried, then he ate. His mother was a little bewildered. <coughs> what is this boy saying? So she said, did you hide it? No, he ate it. Okay, well anyway, I'll wait till his father comes home. So then his father comes home, she tells him everything. And uh, so he explains, yeah, Gopinath ate everything. So the father is thinking, hmm, we'll have to see. So the next day, the next morning, the same thing. He says to his wife, you know, you give him the ladu and milk and you bring it into the deity. I have to go to work. But this time he didn't go to work. He hid behind a curtain and watched to see what happened. So when he, when Raghunandana brought the uh, ladu in, put it in front, again, the deity didn't eat right away. He started crying. And this time Gopinath drank half the cup of milk and ate half the ladu. And so when his father Mukunda saw that, he was watching, hiding, he was amazed. He was thinking, wow, this boy, he has such spiritual power. So this word got out what happened, and many people found out about it. Later on, Lord Chaitanya said to Mukunda, they were sitting together, Mukunda was a physician, so he, sometimes he would see Lord Chaitanya. He said to Mukunda, Mukunda, who's the son and who's the father? Raghunandana is your son and you're his father. But who's the son, who's the father? And of course, Mukunda understood what Lord Chaitanya was saying. He said, actually, my dear Lord, uh, Raghunandana, he's the father and I'm his son. Because it's understood that the father teaches the son. So the word got out and Abhiram Thakur heard what happened. So he wanted to meet, you know, little Ranganandana, Raghunandana and pay his obeisances. When his mother had heard about it, she became completely frightened. <laughs> she didn't know what to do. He was thinking, oh my God. If, if uh, you know, Sri Abhiram Thakur pays his obeisances to my little son, he's going to die. <laughs> so she hid him in one place. They were living in Srikanda. And then when Raghunan, when uh, when uh, Sri Abhiram Thakur came, he said, where is Raghunandana? And he said, well, he, he said, he isn't here. Abhiram was completely depart disappointed and parted, departed. When Raghunandana heard that Abhiram had come to meet him, he came to catch up with the Thakur. Finally, he met him at a place called Bordunga, where, after the first offering of obeisances, they danced together in ecstasy. So he offered his obeisances and nothing happened. <laughs> Raghunandana was the incarnation of Pradyumna, and so it was not inconceivable to receive the pranams of such persons as Abhiram Thakur. While they were dancing, little Abhiram, I'm sorry, little Raghunandana, his uh, ankle bracelet fell off and then 
later on that ankle brace was discovered and then they made a temple there in that area and the area is called Nupur Kun because Nupur means ankle bracelet. Another pastime is uh, Gore, uh, Gore, uh, G Gopal Gu, Guru Goswami, I'm sorry, Gopal Guru Goswami. I'm getting names mixed up today for some reason. Gopal Guru Goswami, he, uh, he was also a great devotee. When he was a small boy, Lord Chaitanya placed his foot on his head and left a footprint there. And so when Abhiram Thakur came, uh, he, you know, he offered his obeisances to Gopal Guru Goswami. And of course, because he was a great devotee, nothing happened. Abhiram Thakur, he had a, a whip called Jai Mangala. And if anybody was hit with his whip, they would experience ecstasies of love of God. One time, uh, uh, who was it? Srinivas Acharya came to meet Abhiram Thakur. And then he took out his whip and hit Srinivas three times. His wife was also there. And she said, Thakur, don't beat him anymore. Restrain yourself. He's just a boy. He'll become overly excited by the touch of your whip. Meanwhile, Srinivas was drowning in an ocean of Krishna Prem. So Lord Chaitanya sent, you know, Nityananda and Abhiram to Angadhars and others to preach in Bengal, in Navadweep. He was a learned scholar, according to the desire of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. He married, and his wife's name was Sri Malani Devi. And of course, it says his disappearance is on the seventh day of the dark, fourth night on the month of Chaitra, which is today. <laughs> the descendants of disciples of Abhiram Thakur are still living within the district of Hugla and Bankura at Krishna Nagar. Amta, Vishnupur, and Kultalpur. So today is his disappearance day, incarnation or expansion of uh, Sri Dham, who appeared in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes of Sri Abhiram Thakur, or sometimes known as Sri Ram Das. <laughs> okay, these are some of the few pastimes of um, this great personality known as uh, Sri Ram Das or Abhiram Thakur. By hearing uh, the pastimes of great souls, uh, we get purified and we also get their mercy, and especially on the days of their appearance and disappearance, the mercy is more available. Prabhupada said, appearance, disappearance, there's no difference. Why is that? Because just like the sun, when the sun disappears, it reappears somewhere else. The disappearance and appearance is from our perspective, but the sun never disappears or appears. It's always in its orbit somewhere in the cosmology. So... People who see, they say sunrise and sunset, it simply means over the horizon the sun appears and over the horizon the sun disappears. But there's no sunrise and sunset. Not for the sun, that's for us. So in the same way, great souls, they may disappear, but they reappear somewhere else in some other universe to continue their pastimes with the Lord, to assist him in his leelas of spreading uh, the process of you know pure devotional service <clears throat> so these are some points on the uh, life of abhiram thakur 
Um, he is not only a devotee of Lord, Lord Nityananda, he was Lord Nityananda's favorite friend. Out of all the friends of Lord Nityananda, Lord Nityananda is a Gopal. He's Balaram. Krishna and Balaram were Gopals when they were in Vrindavan. Now they've come to Navadvip. Lord Chaitanya is a little different. He has developed the mood of Srimati Radharani. So many of his fathers are in the mood of Madhurya Ras. And the followers of Lord Nityananda are in Sakya Ras. And so um, Lord Chaitanya had told Lord Nityananda when they were both together in uh, Jagannath Puri to go to Navadweep and preach there and take all your Gopals with you. And so he did. And the leading Gopal was Sri Abhiram Thakur, who is none other than the great devotee, eternal associate of Krishna known as Sri Dham. So they appear in this world simply to purify the earth, to give the devotees associate get to give the, the devotees their association and inspire the devotees in their Krishna consciousness. Okay, so these are some things we can think about. For those of you who are at home, you might do some research online and see how much you can find out about Abhiram Thakur. There's a lot more his appearance in the world and uh, many of his uh, activities are also mentioned in other uh, descriptions of his pastimes. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. If there's any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Any comments? Mm -hmm. It's complete. Mm -hmm. yeah. What can you say? All we can say is, well, maybe someday I can enter into Lord Chaitanya's pastimes and associate with these great souls. <laughs> and that is... That is possible when we become fully Krishna conscious and leave the world. We can get the association of the Lord and his eternal associates in the spiritual world. This world we live in is simply a, a temporary situation for the soul. It's more like a punishment for the soul's fall from the spiritual world here. And we have to, you know, spend some time here, purify ourselves, and go back home, back to Godhead. It's not a place of permanency. It's a place of rectification and purification. Prabhupada said, if you take the deity, you can't put him in the bathroom and worship him in the bathroom. So the same, the same with thing is that this place is like a big bathroom. You can't really stay here. <laughs> Nobody stays in the bathroom. We go inside, do your duty and get out. <laughs> so this material world is designed to simply to give the living entity trouble. And I'm sure everyone now believes it with the present situation. <laughs> if you didn't believe it before, <laughs> At least now, for those who are, what we say, skeptics, <laughs> doubters, uh, that's all gone now. Everybody can understand this place is a place of misery where death is there every, at any moment. doesn't matter how old you are or, or what position you have in, in the world. Death is also 
We'll come and meet you at one point. <laughs> My dear sir, time's up. <laughs> My dear madam, you have to go. <laughs> so this is the material world. So while we're here, we can try and create by Kunta atmosphere, by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and the Lord's pure devotees. Satam prasangam mamavirya samvido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata that in the association of devotees, when one hears and chants the glories of the Lord, it becomes nectar to the ear and to the heart. And through that process, devotional, real devotional service begins and one becomes purified <clears throat> from all material desires. <clears throat> so here's the formula, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Krishna Smaranam, hearing and chanting and remembering the pastimes and activities, forms, names, qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Two kinds of cleaning, cleaning the heart and cleaning the temple. Today, the devotees were engaged in cleaning the temple. The temple is also like the heart. When you clean the temple, you're cleaning the heart because the heart, the temp, the, our heart is like a temple where the Lord resides. So we want to keep the temple clean so that the Lord can reside nicely in his place and be worshipped. So in the same way, we clean the Lord's temple so everything can be nicely, all worship can be done in the proper atmosphere. And when we, we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, we also clean our heart. And from that lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy, and ultimately fear, so these are the, uh, I'll read you something interesting. You might find this very interesting. I received it today. Hmm. Let me see how I can get to it and keep the recording going here. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I can find it here. Okay. Here it is. A young girl, Nandini in Mayapur, wrote this. This is just coming. May I be quarantined in the heart of Shisi Radha Madhava for the rest of eternity. May they have me locked down beneath their reddish lotus feet for the rest of eternity, keeping me safe from the virus of illusion. May they increase my immune system by giving me the vitamins of their service. This is the order from the government of my heart to the citizens of my mind during the lockdown period, which will extend to the existence of my soul. Let me use the hand wash called sincerity to cleanse me of the germs of superficiality. This should be done as many times in a day as possible for at least 20 seconds as per the time of Lord Brahma. Let me keep great distance from the people called lust, anger, pride, and hypocrisy who have arrived from the foreign land full of virus. Let me at least keep a two meter distance from anger from anyone who sneezes and coughs out harsh words against you or your devotees. Let me cover my mouth with the tissue of intelligence whenever I cough or sneeze any complaints about my service to the Lordship. Let me always keep in my mouth the antivirus of your holy names and pastimes. Nice, huh? Very creative, very intelligent. I was thinking the same thing. I don't know. Her name is Nandini. I think she's, you know, one of the girl crew, guru core girls in there. So I'll find out eventually. 
really, really sharp. <laughs> Okay, so no comments, questions, we can end here. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sri Abhiram Thakur Ki Jai. <laughs>